The guy that homesteaded this place come in 1909. And my grandpa came in 1920 and uh, worked for him. He was just 12 years old. And then he went off to the service and when he come back from World War II, he married my grandma and bought this place in 45. He raised his family here, six kids. All I wanted to do through school was ranch. And so when I was a junior in high school, I actually leased this place for my grandparents. And then I moved here right after high school and married my wife. Three years after that, we raised four children here. They only had four pastures, just seasonal pastures. And then, so when we come here, we started chunking things up into sections and then half sections. And as we noticed spot grazing and different things happening, we went full forward into grass management, I guess. Shannon teaches school, and so whenever she's here, she's involved and she's helping, and whether it's moving cows or calving. Or, and then the kids have been a huge asset, and, and, and I think it's good for them that they've learned work ethic and learned how to go out in the world and be leaders and be overcomers instead of succumbers. You know, so they've been able to be independent thinkers here and then go out and apply that to wherever they're at in the world or in life. My grandpa run uh, just pretty much set stock, and he, he was good to the grass. He was a conservationist at heart. Started, we had a workshop here with Wayne Berry and Ryan had brought him down, and that really kind of drove us into overdrive, I guess, as wanting to do something. And, and truth be told, uh, our first motivation was uh, economical, because we, we heard that we could run twice as many cows. And as we got into it and started managing our grass better, we realized we didn't have to run twice as many cows because we were grazing longer in the year. And as soon as that mindset changed, then our grass improved and pretty soon we were running twice as many cows. When we first started this deal, I thought he was just totally crazy. This is not how things are supposed to be done. It's just supposed to be we ride out, we gather, and we calved cattle. But when we started shrinking things down, I just kind of noticed that there was a lot more reward through all of that because you saw the cattle growing, you saw the grass growing, you saw more interaction with the family being a little bit together and they knew what jobs they could do and things just went a lot smoother. My grandpa, when he, he had cattle here, they, they pretty much just grazed in the draws and they didn't have to go to the hillsides or nothing. And we've changed that to where they go into a spot and they graze it out in two or three days and then they're moved to a new spot. And so it's more management as far as moving cattle, but it's not more work because they pretty much move themselves. They come when they're called and told to move. Don't forget everything that grandpa knew. My grandpa started calving in the middle of April when he lived here. And uh, so I was gonna show him how it's done and we went to calving cows the first of March and calving heifers in February. And now we calve everything in the middle of April and in May. So there's, there's a reason they do things sometimes. It's working with nature instead of against nature. We fenced everything into half sections and seen what it did and we were still spot grazing some and then we went to quarters and then uh, the drought of 2012 hit and my oldest son Kenny poly fenced every quarter into 40s with temporary fence and so we were moving fence all the time and, and we just allotted so much for so many days and after we seen how that worked and we regrew more grass than the neighbors actually grew that summer and then we jumped into adjusting how we were doing it and still we started building high tensile fence and splitting them uh, quarters into thirds. And as we go in, the cattle uh, will try to graze everything they can because it's a competition because they're only there for a few days. And so they trample part of it, which helps build biodiversity and build soil, getting that back in contact. They take the other part and they defecate and urinate on the rest of it, which is actually fertilizer and urea as people buy a commercial fertilizer, we have it right there. The cows just spread urea all over it. And so when it gets a rain, it just responds with growth. When I first moved out here 20 some years ago, I was of course not an avid rider. I didn't know a lot about the ground, but we had one place south on the south end of the place that was called Cactus Patch. And that's what it was, it was just cactus all the time. We'd, I mean, the cattle didn't like grazing around it. It had a little dam hole there. And that was probably my first spot of when we started doing more grazing rotations and bringing a few more cattle in, was the grass was overtaking the cactus. So then I was like, okay, maybe we'll put another fence in. But 
I think just watching spots like that, because it took a long time even for that area to work into grass. And I, I mean, it takes a lot of patience and a lot of time and a lot of work, but I think in the end, there's a big reward. To me, it's about God's creation, how amazing it is. We're, we're really not creating anything. We're discovering what's already there and what can happen if you're doing it. You know, the first thing to get into is waste not, want not. So you try to use the grass that they're not using and you get more production that way. The first step would be water development because that, that's probably the biggest daunting task is water. It's not that hard to build a fence. It's hard to get water everywhere. Just split something in half and see what it does because you increase your efficiency so much just by moving them and letting that stuff rest that much longer. If I was talking to somebody from the city about what we're doing here, it's range health because as you can see out there, we have ground cover and it's, it's holding up the water and it's making the water cleaner. Uh, the riparian areas are all grassed over even where we've grazed, there's good cover. And so it's a natural system that's healthy and it's good for the environment. It's helping it. It's recycling what it's produced. So if you're looking for resources to do this, it, the South Dakota Grasslands Coalition would be the perfect place to start because they have uh, so many education opportunities and the mentorship list and a lot of people that are willing and wanting to help you and, and teach you, you know, and to broaden your horizons, I guess.